Yeah. Well, again, that lineup did I would only smile. Um, as I say, some of the songs that we did in those days, we did more songs than we needed. That's one that came about. It ended up being on one of my, my albums, but the, you know, people like that still. I know people say, oh, that's great, but it never became a wing song. So come band on the run, he said, have you got any songs that you've got ideas or whatever for the album? I said, I've got two songs. And he, we joined them together, basically. Yeah, he said, well, well, let's put that there and put this there and, you know, rearrange it, put another verse in, wrote another verse on the end, put the middle bit in where he sings the high bit, and that became no words. And then, again, he forgot the drum break, so that became another little arrangement thing. And then when the strings and the orchestra went on it, wow, it was another thing altogether. So, you know, it kind of makes me feel more serious about songwriting, that you can just take some an, a couple of ideas, go in the studio, and then, you know, month down the road it's like this big thing so I it kind of did encourage me to write more from then on um, I never really looked at myself as much of a writer in those days because I used to be in bands which we did covers of you know good songs but we did that not covers yeah covers not copies we tried to copy them in the early days you see I'm from Birmingham and Birmingham bands tend to be there was a lot of gigs where you had to play the hits you know you know what I mean? And Birmingham bands tended to be good at that. They were from uh, so many musical tastes in Birmingham that came from, like, you know, the factory workers. Say there'd be the reggae people, you know, from uh, from the islands, and then there'd be the uh, the Irish show bands. You know, everybody all had the different music, different areas, and and it was a big music scene, you know. But we we're all doing our own thing based on whatever the songs of the day were, you know. And we mixed them up. I mean, like, Moody's would do, well, prior Moody's even, we would do maybe, you know, money, give me money, and then next to me, ah, ah, who have nothing, do, 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 do. We'd do, like, drama things, just to mix the set up, because the audience is like, oh, I like that song, I like that. So it wasn't, you know, we were just playing to the audience, really. And that was Birmingham. You know, and then you get Liverpool. They had all that influence of all the sailors and the bringing all the stuff and different music. Hamburg, you know, there were people shouting out songs they'd never even heard. Or they that might know a line, but they'd make the rest up, you know, because the audience wants it. Because he wanted to share the load of his fame over to me a little bit more. He wanted, he knew I could come. Look, when I was doing the electric string bang thing, when he saw, I wrote all the stuff. I was the writer. And I wasn't you know, coming up with the stuff so much with Paul, because he was so prolific. He would come up the next day. Maybe we were working on another song that day before, and then he'd come up with a new one, because he just saw something on the television. He's writing a song about that. Let's do this today. That's why he got so many outtakes and stuff that we didn't use on albums sometimes, because we just kept going. He was like bang, bang, bang with his songwriting. He probably spent more time at home being more famous than me, therefore he wrote more songs. I don't know. So, yeah, and I decided that, you know, after being in a Birmingham band and playing other people's stuff, and especially even Go Now was a cover, I felt I wanted to, you know, be more of an, a writer myself. But how do I fit my writing into this band more, you know? The string band I had was my band. I, for, right from the concept, it was me and I did all the writing and all the arranging. Well, I brought in string players and then we'd combine the arranging, therefore. But with, with Wings, it was a completely different thing. And we'd got known as Paul's band more than, you know, a unit as writing-wise. Um, so then I was having to kind of write songs with the idea of, of the wing sound. You know, so, but what happened with me was I was into a lot of uh, not country, but maybe folk, maybe skiffle influences, Buddy Holly, same as Paul, the Everly Brothers, Elvis, you know, Eddie Cochran, singer, guitar players. I was I was into all that, so I used to write from that point of view um, more, and a lot of country ideas came out of my playing, you know, my songs, folk, country. 
Paul was totally into all kinds of music too, like I say, and and we were very adaptable. So, so I mean, I always say about Paul, he's a great bass player because he plays melodies, but because and he's also one of the best harmony singers around. You know, he's got the range, but he's got the he knows the notes. Bang! It's like you know they're either in you or they're not. You don't have to search for them; they're there. He's very easy to work with like that, and he's a real pro too. I mean, you know. The one thing you can say about the Beatles was they're a great band, and live they were a great band because I played with the Beatles when I was in my own band, the Diplomats, before the Moody Blues. I first met them at, in in Birmingham, and they were tight, you know. And that's when all the girls were starting to scream, but they they still played really, really tight. <clears throat> they had a great groove, you know. It wasn't anything other than that. You, if you had a good groove and you could get everybody dancing, excited. That's how you got famous. There's nothing to do with contriving. It's just it's the combination of the people. So I had that thing with Paul where whatever I wrote, he could throw something in there good, and it would be it would be something you know like whoa that's it, that works you know, <clears throat> and then a, co a lot of the stuff I wrote from then on were a bit Everly Brothers ish in the sense that the harmonies were. Like two people singing the melody, if you see what I mean. Um, Deliver Your Children was like that. We both sang everything together. He was in a harmony and I was in melody. So, you know, and as I say, it's hard to keep Paul out of a song because he's so talented with that. He's so good at, like, doing the harmonies and working out a great bass part that he fills it out on his own, you know. His part on his own, bass, and would be a great little part, you know. He's putting two parts together like that. It's not like he's just in the background adding a bit here. It's an actual full bit, you know. And that's what we had. We had that ability to, like, work together and each have our own thing, and it worked, you know. <laughs>